mastering the art of business communication, the strategies for success. Um, I've been a facilitator, uh, an academic, an assistant professor. I've been teaching for the last 28 years in India as well as in Oman. And I'm also a corporate trainer for the uh, you know, private organizations, training them on various aspects of soft skills. In this session, I'll be speaking about the letters, the general principles of business co correspondence, memos and emails, and also uh, briefly about the oral communication. Well, the objectives of the sessions are to refresh our awareness of principles of communication, to update our knowledge about written and oral skills, and to upgrade our knowledge to enhance your confidence at work. Now, if you look at this particular slide, you can see two, two statements. And for a person who is not very careful about language and its nuances, the punctuation at the middle of the statement doesn't make much of a difference. Whereas if you have seen this and if you have understood it, both the statements mean two different things. One is let's eat grandpa, which means like cannibals, you know, let's all pounce on the grandpa. The second one is inviting grandpa to eat. Let's eat grandpa. So remember, punctuation is an important element of communication. And definitely correct punctuation can save grandpa's life also. Well, why is it communication uh, so difficult? Okay, we have been communication perhaps ever since we were born, but then it is still a complex process, I guess you can see. From the center on one side, A, we have to move on the other side, B, as the receiver. So carrying on this message is not as easy, easy as we see it in perhaps in this small diagram here because it involves a lot of other components like the channels and the media, how we communicate. Is it through verbal means or just just a non-verbal means? Are we using technology in our communication or is it a face-to-face -face communication? Nevertheless, besides these elements that we mentioned over here, there are also perceptual filters. Now, what are these filters? There may be some bias that we have, prejudices that we have, which might influence our communication. If I tell that there is a big tree, a huge tree in front of my house, to the to 10 different viewers or listeners, that tree might be something different in each one's mind. This is because the listener perceives matters based on their association with the words. So to be more specific, I have to be tell exactly, you know, I refer a coconut tree, though so then at least some more specific information will be there in the minds of listeners. Now, if you look at the more on the business side, people actually write these applications. This is an actual a collection of leave application letters. An employee applied for half a day leave and says, uh, since I have to go to the cremation ground and I may not return, please grant me half day casual leave. Uh, I believe the other microphones may be turned off. OK, thank you. Uh, the second statement says another leave letter says, as my mother in law has expired and I'm responsible for it, please grant me 10 days leave. Now, both the writers in these letters obviously made the similar mistakes. They always were in a hurry to write about it. They didn't pay attention to what they wrote. They thought the meaning was conveyed from the from themselves to the readers are the same. But you can see there are some uh, some difference in the, in the perceptions of the readers in this case. So both of them uh, took it from the writer's perspective and didn't think about the reader's perspective because both, this, both the uh, letters here contain some kind of a misunderstanding, you know, a kind of secondary meaning to it. Whether the first one says, no, I may not return, is he going to die there in the uh, cremation ground? And the second one says, I'm responsible for it, for the death of my mother-in-law. No, obviously, what he meant is I have to do the rituals for my mother-in-law's death. So that's what. So these kind of things are very common in our day-to-day -day conversations in the business world. And mastering the art of business communication is definitely a skill by itself. 
and not as something which is impossible. Every business letter carries the hallmark of your personality and their ambassadors or representatives that will go to another place just like an ambassador of a country. This letter, this email go to uh, goes to another person's office and then uh, does, does whatever you know or, or the intended purposes. Always remember that not in an email, in a letter, consider the reader's point of view is very important. OK, let's look at this is a typical letter with a from address and the date and the to address. There's a salutation, you know, dear Mrs. Wright. There's a subject line and the three paragraphs, the introduction, the middle and the final paragraph. And there's a as a conclusion here is your sincerely the complimentary close and the name and the title of the person who writes. And if there are any enclosures, mention what it is. Now, usually when we start a letter, we always thank you for your letter if there is a response to a previous letter. And the next one after you introduce is once you state the uh, always remember to state the purpose of this letter. Do not delay the purpose of the letter. This is not a report. This is not something which people read it at leisure. All of us in business world, we have very little time to uh, read and comprehend the letter so let's be as brief as we can so state the object as early as possible i'm writing in response with reference to this to inquire about and towards the end always remember to write the letter in a more polite and more positive manner we look forward to receiving your reply i hope things are clarified uh, from our end so this is a forward looking statement towards the end of the letter Let's now look at the principles of business communication. It's categorized into three different areas just for you know, convenience. There are lots of concepts of business communications, but then let's look at the, the most important, the fundamentals of business communication, courtesy and consideration, directness and conciseness, clarity and precision. Okay, let's take up each one of them. Courtesy and consideration. Courtesy or politeness or respect is something which we always have, whether you meet a person, um, you know, face to face or even in a business letter, business letter. It's like the oil that removes friction. Always use the word thank you. The magical words that we studied in our kindergarten, perhaps. OK, thank you and welcome and please and kindly. Now, these are all well appreciated in the business world. And avoid using we cannot accept your request because it's very harsh. Um, it's a bit rude to you can always put in a different way. The courtesy and consideration also mean that we understand the listener or the reader in this case. For example, we are pleased when we receive such suggestions from our customers. We feel sorry when we find that our customers are not satisfied with our service. You can always see the word we and us and are this highly the we approach the writers approach. Whereas the basic principles of the business communication says you should always please the other party in the in the communication, the reader or the listener of the communication use more of you. We are grateful for the suggestions you have made. We are sorry that you are not satisfied with the bank's online service. Now, this very specifically tells what the problem is and the you, the word you has been taken into consideration. If you look at the advertisements that we see on a day to day basis, we see this you attitude very prominently given. You can achieve success by enrolling with us. The success you deserve depends upon your training. There is always something special in the air when you fly with us. You can see the word you and yours. Not that we have the best trainers. Okay, please join us. You deserve success and it depends on your training. The, the, the entire perspective is taken from the reader's point of view and not from the writer's point of view. Another example of conciseness is look at the statement on the left. left. We are in receipt of your esteemed favor of 14 September. And in reply back to advise you that we have returned to our head office in Muscat. On hearing from them, we shall be in a position to communicate to you our exact and considered decision. To many people who read this communication, okay, it might be Greek and Latin, perhaps. Um, as I've seen in uh, some of my training sessions, also 47 words are included here. Look at the on the other side. 
Thank you for your letter of 14 September. We have written to head office in musk attention to let you know our decision on hearing from them. Straight, simple, concise. From 47 words, it's reduced to 28 words and the language also is very simple. Avoid verbosity. Words are like money, economize. Direct and concise words carry a lot of meanings and it creates impact on the minds of listeners. Examples of flabby expressions. We are of the opinion that, or please free free to write. Improved one, we think, please write to us, okay? Also, so there are simple words, conversational words that can be used. Gone are those days of the old archaic use of language. Now, people want more of simple, straight, direct communication. Again, the words sometimes can be uh, having, some of the statements can be having redundancy, which means repetitions of the same idea. See whether you can find out. Advanced warning, close proximity, necessary requisite, new beginning. Now, you can see that all these phrases have uh, repetitions of the same idea. If you see that you know you need only one of these words, so de delete the delete the other words to, the, to make it more precise and concise. Sometimes we use intensifiers in the language. Now, by intensifier we mean the words which do not carry actually anything. The word actually quiet definitely do not have much room for meaning. They are all flowery language words. Perhaps that can be used for oral communication, but certainly not in the business formal communication. Instead of managers actually quite pleased with your proposal because the plan is definitely workable. The manager is pleased with your proposal because plan is workable. So avoid this kind of words. Again, the words like they thought the report was good. There are some words which are very generic. For example, good. How was the presentation? Sometimes I ask my students, how was the presentation? Yeah. Oh, it was really good. It was excellent. Does it mean anything to the presenter? If you want to be really um, creating an impact of your response to it, you should say how the presentation was. Describe it. Or another instance, she said she would get in touch with you. Now, the word get in touch is very vague. How many ways can you get in touch with people these days? Direct, indirect ways, using technology, WhatsApp, or you know, Instagram, email, telephonic communication. So let's improve that. The first one says the management council was thought Tom's report was factual and well written. So the word instead of good, you change it to factual and well written. She said she would get in touch. How? She said she would send you a text message. So I know exactly that what I can expect. You know, Sheila is going to send me a text message. So I'll expect her message on my mobile as a text message. Again, the words like use simple expressions because Matthew Arnold said, have something to say and say it as clearly as you can. And that's the only secret of style. So let the words be as simple and precise, plain and use simple expressions. For instance, again, the same thing, you know, contact me or as soon as possible has uh, these words have some vague uh, ideas in the minds of listeners or readers at your earliest convenience and these are all i'm sure everyday conversational words but there are there is a room for misunderstanding so let's avoid that contact me by email not as soon as possible by tomorrow evening so let's be precise give the date and the um, you know clear expressions of it when you start letters now we are as we're talking about letters it's also important to know the ending of the letter depends on how we start the letter. For instance, okay, here we start with the name of the person and then you use the word yours sincerely. In a situation where you do not know the word, the name of the person, we always say dear sir or dear ma'am. In this case, use yours faithfully. So these are all, okay, um, maybe century old practices which uh, have never been changed, which has never been changed. So these are expressions which we always follow in business communication. Then nuances. Not everybody knows about it, but imagine your boss or somebody who receives your mails and uh, letters know about it. Then they might hold you against your uh, effectiveness of communication. 
If you're writing an email or a memo, then it's always say, okay, dear, okay, the name of the person or hi is okay. Then you can use best regards or regards. That's okay. In a printed letter, okay, it is not, although it is becoming common now, it's not considered standard to use with regards because with regards is a very uh, informal way of writing the complimentary close. Always give, remember, uh, always remember that now when you give information, uh, use the tone of the letter. For example, when you are sharing a positive, uh, a happy news, we always use, we are happy to enclose. We wish to inform, we are pleased to inform you. So the word pleased and happy creates an excitement and the reader knows what to expect in the next statement. Whereas when you give a negative information, before you actually break the news, always use the word, we regret to inform you that your application was not successful. We are sorry to tell you that your credit loan, the credit has been run into red. So always use the word regret or sorry when you introduce a negative situation. Another situation, same instant incident is instance here, but there are two different managers. One manager said, you will not get the loan if you don't sign the forms. The other manager said, you will get the loan as soon as you sign the forms. Now look at the difference of the, the tone of the, these two statements. One person, the first person was a negative. You will not get the loan. Whereas the second person, the second manager is looking for business. He says you will get the loan as soon as you sign the forms, positive response. Now that comes to another aspect of our discussion. That is, look at this. After reading the sentence, you are now aware that if you read this carefully, many of us might not read or understand that the word the has been repeated. And also there are some, you know, other errors like, you know, there is a run on words there. There is no spacing in between. There's a spelling error here. So there are lots of things are here in a fast reading. Perhaps you may not catch these things that shows the importance of proofreading in communication. The banner which I found in my uh, institution says that if I had eight hours to chop a tree, I would spend six hours sharpening my axe. So what is sharpening the axe? Sharpening the axe is the preparation, the planning. What about careful planning? You know, we always say that, you know, fail to plan is plan to fail. OK, so. Uh, failing to plan is planning to fail the same way. So let's look at the word, uh, the statements here and see what difference, what is incorrect, what is correct here. Okay, as you can see, there are two statements on the left and the right. Well, what is Jacob's hobbies, you know, like cooking? Not his family, he doesn't cook his family, but he's cooking his Ah, uh, he likes cooking, he likes his family, and he likes his dog. Okay, so these are some of the expressions. Again, the importance of no, being of uh, showing careful editing aspect in communication is important. Here is another one. Well, it's obvious if you read through it, you can see what is the error here. What is the misunderstanding in the communication? Whether there are no crocodiles here or is there a pause? Crocodiles do not swim here. That's what the intended boat. OK, so one day English will kill us. Well, this is also another one which I have found quite amusing on the social media. All right, whether it was necessary or not, up to you. But it was a happy wedding anniversary. What is meant over here? What is what is important here? You should prepare the, the letter after you complete writing it. And that's why sometimes it's always advisable to give your letter to another person whom we can trust in editing it. Even if we read our own letters 10 times, we may not find our own mistakes because the idea is in our head. Whereas someone else can see that because we are too close to the idea. We read you know, something which is missed there because it's in our head. So always remember to enlist somebody to check your message. OK, in banks, they call it the maker checker concept. Somebody makes it, somebody checks it, and it's always useful in case of business communication aspect. 
let's now move on to emails okay uh, the word email comes from the word memos uh, from latin word memo which means something that is to be remembered the main difference of letters and emails are letters are slightly longer okay whereas emails can be short in these days there are four elements of emails the subject line the bo opening body opening sentence the body and the closing subject lines should summarize the message clearly and concisely it should tell the story before the person opens your message nowadays people open the emails on their mobile devices or on the tabs so avoid meaningless one word headings avoid this help urgent it doesn't convey any meaning in the professional business world okay unless it is a real sos you can't type anything more than that you know the opening of the letter should convey the main idea as early as possible the body should have information logically presented you should use numbers of bullet list and consider adding some visual impact if it is needed colors perhaps the closing should highlight what is expected from this email what is the outcome that is expected let's look at the 10 email hacks the top 10 write clear subject lines you can see there are three one is here second is here the third is here from staff meeting look at what is being conveyed the much better subject line by weekly staff meeting for updates december 12 and the time is given so the person knows what kind of staff meeting the purpose of it when it is conducted there so second tip is reduce the number of paragraphs limit the paragraph length to one to three lines in the email people don't have long attention span when they are online so please understand use the list and the outline format as much as possible because here is an example for you okay i hope you are great speaking customer you know so lot of a big pair chunk of uh, you know words written on there it's not quite reader friendly as you can see the same information is conveyed on the left and you can see that what is the how did the person improve the same message one is the person has used listing the numbering of it and the paragraph lines the content is broken down into small small chunks this is more reader friendly people will read it understand it carefully so the right one is more preferred in these days the third one specify what is the, the response expected by the reader sometimes when you read the emails towards the end we are confused we don't know what to do okay we, we read some information so what is my action what am i supposed to do please state it very carefully could you please email me the answers to the questions by the end of the week so that is already conveyed there the subject line i request three items financial matters from you avoid socialization in official communication and that is something which we all know okay so that is it has different uh, you know area that is a personal communication not by the official email by itself bluff it now bluff stands for bottom line up friend b l u f what about the information that you are seeking towards the end stated at the beginning the purpose of this email is to outline our current policy so the statement is given at the beginning itself or you say i need some financial data that i am working on modify the emails the etiquette of it is uh, you should change the subject lines as per what is the content of your mail avoid using reply all and observe the 24 hour rule in as a net etiquette we call it net etiquette when you send an email people expect 24 hours for a reply even if you can't give a complete information people expect that there is a response to my email sent to this particular organization so remember these things and then the next one is focus on solutions no manager wants to hear just the problems written by you no manager wants to hear just the blame game in your email communication suggest solutions what you are expecting always go with the problem and suggest solutions so that the manager is able to take 
some decisions make made on the help the manager to take a decisions so criticism alone is not helpful for anyone always have somebody to you know suggest what is the solution how can we come out of this issue or the problem and not just blaming somebody categorize your emails it's important to see what is the priority for your email so always use priority you know urgent important to be mailed today or is it a report to be done tomorrow or you have got time to respond to this mail by the end of the week always categorize and obey the rules by rule here the rules of your company okay so fedex has a very specific 10 email best practices okay they say that begin with a specific accurate subject think before you type use the cc line when it is necessary only and if you want a group of people to read your message and to take action for uh, your message everybody is responsible write them in the two not in the cc cc is only the courtesy copy a person is not supposed to respond or take action on it it is just a courtesy so these are some of the things which people understand when you uh, send email communication try to avoid we said the words like you know no don't use a single word and never use only capital letters in your email because cap all caps are considered as a shout in print uh, seek permission for forwarding and reduce attachments i think you know that you no know, we all speak in the in, in the uh, in the digital world these days these three monkeys are very common very popular across the world i believe don't hear evil don't speak evil don't see evil well in the most modern communication technology with the upcoming with the uh, you know upcoming days of um, uh, the advent of social media communication can be ubiquitous and quick but so be careful about the fourth monkey which is added there host no evil a like or a comment or any response to some of the posts might okay take you to trouble so avoid posting evil it also says that never reply when you're angry never make a promise when you're happy never make a decision when you're sad think about these the last segment is the oral communication so let's look at the importance of oral communication and what is important here is to discuss a formal communication at work and also using the a few tips on uh, mobile telephonic communication we have seen that communication is a two way process and you should use the appropriate medium and a common frame of mind okay please recall the discussion the the analogy we said about i have a huge tree in front of my house so which tree it depends on you to specify Albert Muhrbian's concept of face to face communication is very popular in business communication it says the elements of personal communication now this refers to face to face communication in particular okay basically face to face communication here it says that when we communicate to somebody on a face to face situation only 7% of our communication is through words the rest 93 communication 93% of the communication is through non verbal modes it could be voice tone or body language so remember 93% it's quite surprising is conveyed through body language let me give you a very small example you walk into your office and you ask somebody how are you and the person is saying i'm fine how are you okay and you ask somebody you greet another person how are you and he says i'm fine how are you both people said the exact same words but you know the difference there the first person really mean that he's fine or she is fine the second person as in obviously there is some trouble so remember this is also important in telephonic communication 18% is only the words that we speak the 82% of telephonic communication is by the non verbal means the tone the the volume how we said the words the pitch and the speed of it so remember in a face to face communication we speak in two languages one is verbal the other one is non verbal there are lots of aspects of first impressions of a um, uh, that happens in a face to face communication 
often remember dress is a very important element people judge you okay no no matter i mean regardless of what we say you know we don't judge others people are judgment creatures human beings are highly judgmental and not they may not speak it out but they always judge by looking at the people and making assumptions and conclusions of it so there are lots of things that you have to be careful about when you speak speak only what is relevant for the other person don't speak too much that also shows the importance of kinesics of proxemics the body language the space and territory the palm and the gestures the facial expressions and everything i think many of you might know this italian referee colina he said if i have i only have a few seconds to convey or resolve the situation so i use the right body language that's essential maybe it's a look maybe the smile or much firmer so gestures are like words learn to do some kind of uh, le- uh, you know um, assess understanding on the body language because that will help you in your business communication good listeners focus on and soak up on every word spoken by the speaker do not respond immediately and remember words are to be understood with the spoken method also so the cues of the speaker are equally important as you can see uh, 93% of the spoken word is through non verbal means so give importance be empathize empathize with the speaker maintain the eye contact and every presentation if you're having should have a three part beginning middle and the end these are some of the extemporaneous delivery elements okay remember the eye contact the poise and the confidence the posture facial expressions the voice modulations and the volume telephone tips tips the last part of it okay we have already seen that 18 percentage of our only is the words on the telephonic communication 82 is the tone of your communication okay so use formal greetings when you answer somebody officially and speak clearly in a professional tone do not chew anything do not sip a cup of coffee or water and always use a smile when you speak to somebody on the telephone they can't see you but they can feel your expressions on through the word through the sound listen and learn train your people to be aware of what others speak always allow the other person to finish his or her thoughts and then you confirm your understanding do you think you know or did i understand can i confirm your understanding that you have this problem and you are looking for a solution and these are some of the quick communication tips and remember we said this earlier emotions heavily influence um our communication so never reply when you are angry never make a promise when you are happy never make a decision when you are sad this could always lead to strategies for successful business communication thank you so much over to you obehi the the bido i do have a question for you um and and it, and it goes this way because you talk about a lot of interesting thing and i i could even see a lot of um the teaching there very interesting and very captivating you know apart from the visual thank you, thank you. apart from the visual you are really good thank you so much for that now after listening to you somebody have listened to you and see what you have said now the person is asking he or herself what is the benefit what is the difference what if a business decide to be effective or not to be effective with their communication what difference does it make please share with us see effective communication in business and imagine you you are an expert in everything you have the uh, uh, an experienced staff with you you have um, all the best technology that is available that's in your office but if the attitude of people okay like somebody i think uh, Yanubi, sorry, I may be wrong in pronouncing a name. Was telling about the soft skills. If you don't have the apt, appropriate soft skills, you are at a big disadvantage. It's like having a beautiful table, but the legs are wobbly. So it's not basically functional. Whereas, you know, in today's world, people can match with. Because you have been telling about, you know, how we are unique by ourselves as an individual. Yes, of course. today's business world also tries to you know become unique in our in their own perspective the only difference is 
this uniqueness comes from the human individual service that they undertake. Because if you look at the supermarket, for example, every supermarket uh, around us um, sells the same product, only maybe a few uh, uh, little difference in the in the in the money. That's it. But what makes business successful today is the service game. It's a service game. Look at the banks; they offer almost every you know banks. Um, every bank that is around us has the same exactly same product or service as a credit card and debit cards and deposits. For an individual, what makes a difference is how different are these banks? How different is the staff of this bank um, treating you individually? So um, while you talk about the importance of knowing this good business communication, if you have, if you're using common sense into business communication, you'll definitely be more successful than your competitors. Because technology, anybody could app, adopt uh, a good business, house the brick and mortar buildings. Anybody, if they have the funds, they can have, they can have the nice sofas, they can have the good logo or anything. But if they are not able to enhance the human resources, which is an incremental process of improving their uh, you know, know-how and the skills, then you are at a big disadvantage. On the other hand, if your human resources are competent, respectful, considering customers as individuals, you can be the most, the topmost leader in their market. Thank you, Vicky, for this opportunity. As I once again, you know, reciprocate the same, uh, you know, feelings that other uh, speakers have expressed here. As a wrap up of today's session, we have been talking about the vital role of effective business communication in our professional endeavors. And in our fast paced business environment, the ability to convey ideas, listen actively, and adapt our communication is a strategic advantage for any business. And let's commit to refining our uh, communication. That's an important thing because learning has no end from the cradle to the graveyard that's the time for learning so let's continue to improve upon our own skills of communication and as we embark on the other projects in the future uh, it is not just a soft skill it's a it's a great power it's a powerful tool that can propel us towards our goals so that is my message thank you for the time and here is to building a future where communication is a catalyst for our collective success. Thank you, B. Thank you so much for that, Dr. Binu. Uh, please remember to tell the people how to find you. Yeah. Yeah, I can be reached uh, with the same name. I have a YouTube channel with entertainment and educational, Binu James Matthew. And I am on Facebook and on LinkedIn. I would like to be connected with the rest of the speakers. It would be great to have you know like-minded people to be connected. Thank you. No, Mr.